you recording? Yeah. All right, now, uh, get high. Okay, okay. Hit, just hit something. I don't care what it is. I'm gonna smoke this stogie. I smoke my stogie wherever I want. <laughs> I, I don't love that need video. no. I don't need no not November coupon like you. <laughs> But it's like the main character, he like joins like a detective agency, right? Mm-hmm. They like go around and they like stop a bunch of big bads. It's a really it's a really good series. I really like it. You should watch it. The main character's like eh, he's okay. But the really good character in that show is the side character. His name's Dazai. He's amazing. <laughs> the character actually is like really, really cool. Like I like him more than I like the main character. Dude, there are some shows where the main character Loki sucks ass. Like Deku is horrible. Yeah. Deku is dog shit, dude. I could like the moment that motherfucker started egging Todoroki on to use his powers in their duel was the moment I just gave up on the series. I was like, are they really doing that? Like, why do you want him to use his powers so bad? It's for some bullshit sappy reason, but Deku just beat his ass and take the dub. Like, you don't need to be like a wholesome character all the time, dude. Like, can you just, like, take the dub? You're not gonna beat Todoroki at full power, dude. Especially when you don't have grasp of your All Might powers. And then I was done with my hero. Yeah, I... I, I, like I dropped that hero. shit. I don't mind it. I think it's one of the most overrated animes. It's oh, not no, bad. It's 100%. It's not bad. I don't... I'm not gonna shot it and say... It's, it's not bad, but it's just overrated. so totally overrated, dude. It is dude. very overrated. It's... It's... It's good. I want to say it's great. I want to say it's good. Yeah, dude, people act like it's goaded. It's not goaded. It's definitely not goaded. Okay. Like, people really act like it's goaded or something. Like, it's one of the greats, like Naruto or One Piece or something. It's, it's not right. even close to that. I'm talking to my assistant manager right now. Um, like, she's texting me just because she just got done with Star Trek Picard. Because I have been telling her for months now to fucking watch the new Star Trek shows because she's, like, one of the <coughs> Star Trek fans I know. <coughs> yeah. And I've been telling her to watch it. It's funny because she's like 50-something. Like, she's just an older lady. Um, yeah, me and her are talking about, like, like actually the first season. Because there's a scene in that show where a bunch of Star Trek ships just come at the last minute to, like, save the main characters. But it's so funny because in all the previous Star Trek shows, any fleet of ships in Starfleet is going to be composed of different, like, ship models. <laughs> right there's mm -hmm. going to be different classes of ship and real star trek fans know the classes and like the names of all the ships no matter how insignificant they are to like a t it's crazy it's really impressive um really? like some of the classes i could name it off of my head are like nebula um the nx class the fucking constitution the galaxy the ambassador the nebula class is one of my favorites um, but anyways, there's this scene in the show where a bunch of ships come to save the same, the main character's ass, and it's like, it shows them in space, and the, all the ships are the same, Dylan, but not only that, the CGI is so bad that it literally looks like some motherfucker, co like, control C, control V, the same <laughs> ship, over and over and over again. Like, I was looking at it flabbergasted, I was like, dude, like, you didn't even... I don't know, give one ship, like, a sticker or, like, change the shadows on it at all. It just looked like the same exact fucking ship over and over and over again. It was embarrassing. And, yeah, I was telling I was telling her about how that scene was, like, dog shit. But anyways, dude, 995, we, uh, we have a, a cover story that's actually, like, not uh, any... It's not a part of a long-running cover story. It's a fan request. Which, these are always nice to see. This one's rather boring, though. It's like Luffy and some animals. Um, a little bit boring. Like, I would like to see somebody other than the main character and perhaps some more interesting animals. I'll give it a 5 out of 10. Uh, dude. Marco v. Big Mom, Dylan. Mm hmm That was crazy. Yeah. Like, the fact that Marco Hold is on. squaring up with the Yonko like that. Are, are, are we doing it now? Oh, yeah, we're just rolling, dude. Oh, okay, That's, I'll get cool. It's toasted, Sweet. it's toasted edition. Dude, like, talk to me about this, Dylan. Like, let me hear your words. Because, like, Marco just hopping towards a Yonko like this was impressive as fuck for me. Mm-hmm. Right, no, I thought it was really cool. Because, 
you think Marco's Admiral level, right? Yeah. It's got to be stipulated at this point. Like, it's been said in the fucking scriptures, the text, that this dude is Admiral level. And the fact that he's just kind of squaring up with Big Mom like that, saying, like, you know, I don't know what role you're going to play in this war, but I know even more than they do just how dangerous you could be. That's fire. That's mm-hmm. so fire, dude. Like, Yonko and Yonko Commander interaction. I have been on the Shirley Temple, but that's so fire, dude. What did you think of this right here, Dylan? Uh, right here on the next panel where he's like, uh, Marco is actually, like, hurting Prometheus because oh, yeah. his blue flames are so unique. Uh-huh. I, I thought this was really cool. I thought that that was so badass. The fact that Marco's squaring up with her at all is just so crazy to see because it's an admiral level mm-hmm. character going up against a Yonko. Um, at their, we could say that Big Mom's probably at her prime right now. Like, you know, any older than this and she's going to be going down. Downhill. And it seems like she's probably just gotten stronger with age. Um, I would argue that she's in her prime. And Kaido and all the other active members are definitely in their prime. Whitebeard sure. is the only one who we could for sure say is, like, impaired because he was dead ass sick. And that's crazy because we've only seen a fight between a Yonko <laughs> who was really sick, battered and wounded, and a top admiral. And in that fight, the admiral was kind of being thrown around like a child. Uh, Akainu did, you know, hit back. He did clap back. He, he did, like, open up a giant hole in Whitebeard's stomach and then also in the manga blew off his face. Yeah. Uh, but we're also not going to see her and act like Whitebeard wasn't kind of handling him like a child's toy. Like, he definitely had the upper hand no, he, in he, it. Yeah. And if Whitebeard was, like, just regular Whitebeard, like, not sick and not wounded, he would have mopped the fucking floor with him. Uh, so I agree. there is a I definite huge i de- people think that admirals are like on tier with yonko like they could deadass really compete with them i feel like in a 1v1 situation a yonko will always sig- like have the like, there there's actually like a slight gap there that's pretty not huge but there's a decently sized gap there like the yonko will always take a dub in a 1v1 against an admiral uh, that's just how two it be. Admirals? Two, two admirals, two admirals, I would say two we'll admirals, take the dub. two admirals are definitely taking the dub. It's gonna be a high diff fight still, even because that's just how crazy the Yonko could be. Mm-hmm. Uh, but dude, like Marco going against Big Mom like this is so sick. But Big Mom is literally just like grabs him by the neck, yeah, which is dude. <laughs> which is like you bastard, how dare you? Like that's real. That's rather giga chat of her. Mm -hmm. um so she's actually like impairing his ability to transform possibly with hockey is that what's going down here like why can't he just transform into a bird what's keeping him from doing that is it big Mm -hmm. mom's hockey is it the fact that she's got her like giant hand wrapped around his throat what could be the cause i don't know but she's basically opened up a window for para sparrow as you can see right here to shoot him with a candy bow and arrow which is badass Mm -hmm. Uh, like listen para sparrow gets bitched around by big mom and but i think he's gotta be like rather rather strong uh like i think he's strong he's got like a bounty 700 million million. yeah it's pretty high his fruit is also like pretty impressive it could do some impressive things pretty good i would say it's pretty good and then also think of this dude remember in his first interrupt interaction caesar clown was like really afraid of getting licked by him so i think if he actually licks people he could turn them into candy like i think that's a feature of his fruit that would be dope like i no, that's gotta be like he could like turn people into candy yeah i can definitely see that because his tongue's like a big part of it because he kept on threatening he kept on threatening caesar saying like i'll turn you into a candy man if you don't do what you're fucking told you know what i mean i think he it's because this fruit's like the lick lick fruit or something or the candy candy fruit but he's always like licking people Mm -hmm. and he's got a big ass tongue so i think he could like lick people and turn them into candy which you know his fruit's pretty fucking cool i was just thinking about this and i was reminded in my last video that i made talking about how there's a total lack of zones in this arc 
And I kept on reminding myself how much cooler Big Mom's crew is compared to Kaido's. Like, uh, uh, out, yeah. outside the top of executives, dude, like, the Toby Ropo aren't that interesting. Like, let's be clear. They're really not that interesting. I am way more interested in, like, Big Mom's fucking mass array of different children, and they have such crazy fruits. Like, some of them are really OP, like Montador's book book fruit? Mm-hmm. Dude, that shit was crazy! Uh, Giel's, I think her name is, she's got the butter butter fruit, and all of her kids' fruits are like paramecia that are based off food. Yeah. And like, well, besides the book book fruit, that one is fire, though. And then there was that one guy who just ate, like, the cream cream fruit, and he made the the cream that actually burned people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I, f- I forget what his name was, but... I forget his fucking name, too. It was like... A, it started with an O or something like... And then Oprah, there was even Oprah, a... Oprah. There know. was even a member of Big Mom's crew that was, like, s- the seven triplets combined. They had this weird fruit where it was, like, the combined fruit. Or you could, like, combine all the triplets and make them into one person. Um, which was kind of lame, considering it was, like, seven little kids going together. But I bet if they were, like, full-fledged adult the fruit would be crazy but anyways here we are fucking marco is about to get shot by this candy arrow and then here we go uh he said too bad marco looks like i'll be taking mama's side now you're someone i've wanted to kill on different occasions in the past how ironic so he thinks he's actually gonna get marco which is so funny dude like no way are they gonna let this fan beloved character get uh killed off and then here we go i we were talking about how carrot has got to fight para sparrow in the sulong form Mm -hmm. because if (laughs) carrot were to do it in base form that's just like fucks the power scaling so hard dude like that fucks it it. it just i don't think it like makes sense yeah dude and another thing uh, another thing that like two good corrections in this uh, in this episode one they didn't just make it carrot alone they didn't just make it carrot alone. Wando is with her as well, which is mad appropriate. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's a fight I would expect. Like, Wanda and Carrot in, in Sulong form versus Para Sparrow is a good fight. Like, even Carrot in Sulong form 1v1ing Para Sparrow, dude. Like, come on. I wouldn't expect her to be able to do it. Like, Para Sparrow's 700 million fucking berries candy candy man. Like, I expect him to be able to defeat Carrot in Sulong form. Um, but Wanda in Carrot, though... And they get the drop on him. They fucking just fuck him up around the eyes. Look at that. That's crazy. That's some violence. That's dope as shit. Mm-hmm. And what's hilarious is that in this translation I'm reading, I don't know if it's the same for you. He says, you crazy furry. Yeah, no, I was dying He when calls I read them the furries, time. dude. He calls them furries. That's funny as hell. Um. So, yeah, they fuck Perospero up. They get an opener on him. It's like, you're that Nink. Sulong. She's surprised to see the Sulong form. Big Mom's very well informed, by the way. She seems to know a little bit about everything. Mm-hmm. That's, so that's him, Pedro's killer. Yes, if it wasn't for him. He's like, that idiot Pedro blew himself up. And it was I who suffered the consequences, which is, like, pretty true. I know that Pedro's sacrifice is somehow related to this war. Keep moving forward, Pedro says. He's like, who are you? Your master Neko Mamushi's friend Marco, is it? That's right, Yoi. So annoying. Dude, this is dope. This is really dope. This is dope. Big Mom just flying on Zeus like that, just like jumping forward. That's so sick. To be on the sidelines of the battlefield. Don't involve me in your squabbles. Do whatever you want. Marco, if you want to kill me, do it some other time. I don't have any souls to use against you right now. Um, yeah, because, like, he, she can't, like, use Prometheus, and then Zeus is fucked up below her as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's a really awesome panel of Big Mom. It is. It's a really good one. And they're basically saying, like, okay, Marco, go on ahead. We're going to take care of Pero Sparrow. And then we're in the uh, we're inside the dome, Zoro, and uh, uh, can we go yeah. back real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, 
Um, I just want to point something out. When below, like, the, you know, cool big mom panel, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have the one with Paris Brown and his eyes are fucked, right? And then there's uh, Marco and then the one next to it. Yeah. Yeah. If you, like, are reading, it's uh, obviously he's, like, near the fucking, where the sh shit with Queen is happening, right? Yeah. With Zoro. All right? And he's, like, saying, like, what the hell is that? So obviously he's going to go investigate, right? Yeah. And I'm really, really am curious to see how his, like, blue flames could affect the, like, uh, ice demons in the plague. Yeah. Oh, like, heal them? Like, you think he might be able to hear, I don't, heal Chopper I don't, up real quick I don't at know. least? I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it'll be, like, be able to, like, outright heal it or, like, possibly, like, slow it down somehow. I don't know. But I feel like it's definitely going to play some part in what's going on. Gotcha. Obviously, dude, like, I, it's so crazy that Marco is here. That's so fucking awesome. Like, and amazing. also, he's it. already, like, doing, he's already being extra. Like, he's already just clashed with Big Mom. Uh, but oh, the, dude. but the fact That's is, great. is that, dude, Big Mom's a Yonko, and, I, I, like, Marco's still an Admiral level character. Like, Big Mom was like, fuck this, and grabbed him by the throat. That was so yeah, Giga Chad. Dude. That was so Giga Chad of her. Uh, yeah, dude, no, that is true. I cannot wait to see what role Marco continues to play, because he's, like, an Admiral-level character that is on Luffy's side. Like, that's crazy. Um, actually insane. It's actually insane. Inside the Ice Dome, live stage. They're like, go oh, fuck, you get a poo. And uh, a poo manages to dodge the 720-pound cannon, which is a feat of its own. Like, come on, Zoro's a god. So the fact that Apu right now is running away from Zoro being bitch made. He's like, that was close. Um, so yeah, they're like begging him for the antidote. He's like, no, I'm literally not going to give it to you guys. Like, I'll be killed. Um, and they're all turning into zombies. And Apu doesn't give a fuck because he's definitely like a selfish asshole. Uh, <clears throat> and, and I think he's like blows them all up they're like begging for his help and then apu just proceeds to blow them all up and also apu is big like look he at is. look at zoro and x drake in this panel right now doing a little double take on him um the fact that apu is able to block zoro and drake's attacks with his with his like whatever the fuck those police batons are like whatever those things are is fucking impressive. Mm -hmm. Like, that is actually impressive. Like, I actually didn't expect Apu to have this much in him. Like, to be able to block this shit. Like, that's crazy. Um, I want to back up Kinemon and the others. Fighting you will only waste my time. And Drake's like, I've always hated you. It's like, likewise, you fool. And uh, what I'm really excited about is down below. But what I'll say here is that it is crazy impressive that Apu is actually able to block, like, an onslaught from X-Drake and, and Zoro. Because X-Drake and Zoro are both capable of putting extremely large amounts of power into their sword weapon swings. Like, mm -hmm. we we gotta agree on that much. Like, you saw Drake take out one of those giants in, like, one shot. Zoro's done crazy-ass feats, so it's really impressive that Apu is able to do this. He's actually got a little bite other than his devil fruit, which is something that I didn't expect from him. Uh, Queen is then going into a little monologue and saying, so he's Rono Zoro, huh? It's best to crush their second and third fighters early on. But who would have thought that the judge's son is part of this crew? Vince Smoke Judge. Dude, I think that is foreshadowing that Queen has some kind of beef or past relation with Judge, and that also this is basically confirming and foreshadowing that Sanji's going to fight Queen. Yo, that is what I'm hoping that this panel is right here. That could definitely be true. I could definitely. Ooh, when I saw it, this panel, that's what I. That's the impression I was getting. And it, it makes sense because he's too. talking about Zoro, and he's saying it's best to crush their second and third best fighters early on. So it's just like uh, they totally. Uh, they, uh, listen, obviously, obviously, Jimbei is stronger than Sanji, so they for, are forgetting about Jimbei. But the big three. Do you know what I mean? Like Sanji, Zoro, and Luffy. And the fact that Queen is, like, talking to them like they're the big three right now is so fucking dope. 
And then also he's like, oh, that's Rana or Zoro, huh? It's best to crush their second and third best fighters only early on. Meaning, since Queen said, but who would have thought that Judge's son is part of this crew? Vin Smoke Judge. Why is he saying it like that, dude? It's obviously because he's got past mm -hmm. relations with Judge and that he's probably going to take it out on Sanji. And then not only that, but he talks about second and third best fighters. Who, who are the second and third best fighters on their crew? King and Queen. And then he goes to Zoro and Sanji. That means Zoro's fighting King because there's nobody else worthy of a Zoro fight than King. And Sanji's going to fight Queen. It's, it's right here. This is foreshadowing it right now, bro. I swear. Yeah, I, I agree with you. That's how I feel. Anyways, some really boring shit. Like, Chopper's, like... He's just talking about the infection and everything. And they're making a joke about how Brooke can't get the infection because he's a skeleton and he's invincible to it. And then at the, at the bottom, we actually see that Chopper has gotten infected with the virus which is like oh shit look now we gotta you know cure chopper but whatever that that part of the chapter really didn't interest me this is the other great part of the chapter and i'm so happy that oda did this okay so we see we're going back to usopp and nami and um like usopp's putting up a little bit of, of a fight using like his plants and everything to fight these two ancient zones and uh they're not working on him at all. Uh, she's heading towards Zoro. Uh, I mean, Usopp. And she does a skull cannon right onto him. And it fucking cracks his skull. It's dope. It's really dope. And then what's really shocking is that we see Nami fucked up on the floor. Like, she's actually been fucked up. Like, she's actually already experienced a headbutt from an ancient zone type. And she's like, stop. Don't. You'll kill me. I... I give up. You win. He's like, he's like, uh, wait. So he's like, uh, he's like, uh, way to state the obvious. Say it then. I'm pissed off right now. Your captain says he'll beat Master Kaido to become king of the pirates. I'm sorry. He's just an idiot. So please don't headbutt me. Um, if you headbutt me, I'll definitely die. That's crazy. Nami's actually like, I don't think we've seen her this down bad before, have no, we? No, I was thinking the same thing. I don't think we have. Like, she's actually fucked up. Like, I know Usopp has gotten really fucked before, but, like, dude, Nami? That's really crazy shocking that, like, she's there's this giant dinosaur girl has done, like, a high-level attack right into her fucking face. Um, and then this is really raw. She's like, uh, she's like, yes, Luffy... He'll, uh, and then Usopp over here on the left is like, yeah, just say it. Just say Luffy won't be the Pirate King. You don't want to die. Oh, and by the way, you could see Panda Man in that panel above Luffy and Sanji. Flying through the Hold sky. On. Oh, I see him. I see that, him. I, see I don't him. know if that's Panda Man now, because I think there's like a, a face in that panda's dick. And I think that's a smile. What the fuck is on that panda's dick? Is that a face? Do you see what I'm know. saying, dude? Yeah, like, I, know. I, I thought that was the face at first, and Panda that a, was the dick. What, dude? But there's, like, feet there. Like, did this man's smile fruit actually replace his, like, dick with his face? And now he's got a panda face dick? And our, dude, that's... Okay, I'm perplexed by that, but regardless. Uh, Nami does something super jock. And she's like, uh, yeah, he'll definitely become the Pirate King. Definitely. He's like, what? And so, um, Ulti's actually legitimately about to kill Nami. But that's when Tama comes out the blue with Komachio. And bites Ulti, like, uh, on the head. And, uh, and it says, an unexpected ally. But yeah, no, this was so cool, Dylan. Like, you definitely gotta mm -hmm. tell me your thoughts on this, bro. Because I was... Because when I saw that Nami and Usopp were, like, confidently running off and being like, oh yeah, we'll take these guys. Yeah, we'll just take these uh, high executives with ancient zone fruits. Like, ancient zones are crazy strong. Dude, they're so durable. And they, they regenerate are. so fast. And they're... Uh, the fucking, like, dinosaurs are OP. Um, 
So I was like, dude, Usopp and Nami are not on this level, bro. They're not on that level. So the so the fact that they're like just running off, be like, oh y'all, we'll take these guys. Like, you aren't dealing with the Fishman back in Fishman Island, dude. Uh-huh. This is life or death type shit, and I'm actually really happy to see them like panning into them getting fucked up, because that's like what's realistic. That should be a realistic outcome mm-hmm. of like yeah. fucking. Because look at Ulti, like compared to Nami in size in her hybrid form, holding her like she's a fucking doll. Do you see that? In that yeah. one panel, I was like, dude, did you guys really try to fight these guys? They're fucking ginormous. Like, you guys don't have any combat skills outside of, like, your magic wand and a slingshot. Like, are you guys really saying that you're going to take on these two ancient types? That's crazy. So, appropriately, like, that was really cool of Oda that we actually saw Nami getting fucked up like that. Because, for one thing, that was shocking. That mm-hmm. was violent. That was mature. That was dope. I really liked seeing that. That was awesome. That was really good of Oda to do. Because that's what happens when you lo- when you fuckers think you can lollygag and fuck up the power scaling. Be like, oh yeah, we'll just take these two ancient type executives. Yep. Yep, that's what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Um, anything you want to add, Dylan? Uh, no, I don't think so. All right, well, that wraps up chapter 955. Um, give it a rating. Give it a quick rating. Uh, give it a nine. A nine? Woo. Yeah. I give it an 8.5. I can give it a nine. I, I really like what happened. I really like this shit, like Marco. So I feel like things are, are starting to, like, they're progressing the only a reason, lot more The in only this reason I... I'm not giving it a nine is because I feel like we're definitely going to get a like a small handful of chapters in the future from now that are going to be more deserving of that score. True. The, and I can't, I don't want to give it out too early, but like that one right there is an 8.5. Like I really, that was a definitely above, above average chapter. Like they did mm-hmm. all the right things. And also we got to see Marco square off against a Yonko. That was just right. so raw. Yeah, but yeah, no, uh, 8.5 out of 10. Good chapter.